first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. And hello, everyone. Welcome to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. I wanted to bring this up. That is a live shot of Seaside, Oregon right there. It looks... Honestly, it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty inviting right there, <laughs> right now. But we've been talking about this area of the coast quite a bit this week. That's because just a few miles north of here, once you get towards Sunset Beach, a fin whale, an endangered fin whale, washed ashore earlier this week. You've probably heard about this. We've certainly been covering it. And I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about that since there are so many people heading over to see the whale. It is going to be left there to decompose. Now, the uh, tide did take the whale about three miles away from where it first washed ashore, but a lot of people are heading out there to take a look at it. And I wanted to just do a little bit of a deeper dive to talk about fin whales, uh, how and why they're endangered, and what to do when you do go to approach it, because there are some safety tips that you need to, need to have for that. And to do so, I am very grateful to have Bob Pittman from the OSU Marine Mammal Institute uh, joining us. And, and Bob, thanks for, for being able to join me really on short notice today, too, just behind the scenes. I, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking just to start off here, could you tell us just a little bit about yourself and the, the Marine Mammal Institute? Uh, yes, I've been uh, working on whales for probably uh, 40, 45 years. Uh, I'm retired now, but I'm an affiliate at the Marine Mammal Institute, and uh, it's kind of hard to retire from uh, working with whales, so I, I, I continue on there. And uh, I bet it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, during my time, I worked mainly with uh, killer whales, which are predators of fin whales, but uh, also had a lot of experience with uh, other kinds of whales, including fin whales. And uh, I've got a question for you about those killer whales coming up here in a minute, too. So uh, talking about the fin whales, can you explain, you know, where they fit, I guess, in the, the whale ecosystem, uh, if you will, the whale diaspora? And then uh, also what it is, because I know that they're listed on the endangered list, um, uh, what and how they got onto that list? Um, yeah, a lot of large whales are still on the endangered list, and it's because... Uh, uh, because of commercial whaling for over 100 years, uh, especially the last century, we nearly wiped out uh, several species of whales. A lot of populations are still recovering, including fin whales. Uh, they're considered endangered, but their populations are increasing just about everywhere. Uh, and it's a, it's a tribute to our um, efforts to uh, conserve these whales and, and to, to look after them. So there are a lot more whales off the Oregon coast now than there were 30 years ago when I was out there. I mean, that's great to show that the efforts are actually actually working, especially since you said you've been doing this for 40 years, you know, to see that progression and to see more whales out there, that's gotta, that's gotta feel good that the, the conservation efforts are working. Uh, no doubt. I, when I was here in the late seventies and uh, you could spend a lot of time off the coast here and not see a whale. And uh, they are, you can see them from the road now when you're driving along the coast at times. So, you know, I've seen blue whales and humpbacks driving down to Florence. So uh, these conservation efforts are definitely starting to pay off. Uh, how frequent is it that fin whales are off the Oregon coast specifically? Uh, they are fairly uncommon. I, I'm not sure that this is particularly good fin whale habitat here. Um, there are lots of fin whales north of here, and there's quite a few south of here. Uh, and I don't know if they're still filling in here or, uh, like I say, maybe there's just not uh, enough prey for them here. But they're not particularly common here. But uh, uh, if you spend time out off the coast here, you, you will find fin whales. And looking at it, you know, with, with this particular fin whale that washes ashore, how common is that, that, that a whale will wash ashore on that stretch of the Oregon coast? Um, it's uncommon. But uh, it's becoming more common as, as these whales continue to recover, you know, more of them are going to die and wash up on the beach. Uh, to me personally, I think it's a, a, a sign of conservation success when we start getting more whales on the beach if they're dying from natural causes. Um, I saw some uh, imagery of, of that whale. Uh, it, the ship strike is a, a, a large and increasing problem for large whales. We got bigger, faster ships and there's more of them all the time. And uh, it, it clearly was not a ship strike issue. It was thin, uh, perhaps it had some disease or something. It definitely wasn't feeding the way it should. Um, but again, if you have large whale populations, you're going to have those kind of issues. And that's so uh, it's na basically natural course of life of, is what could have been happening here for this whale. 
Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, when when whales get disease, we don't know much about uh, diseases in whales and stuff, and it's it's hard to do a, 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 a medical examination of a whale that weighs 50 tons, you know, so the uh, the uh, stranding response team does does the best they can, and a lot of times they can figure out what happened, and a lot of times they can't. Um, I think that's a, that's a really interesting viewpoint too. Just to know that that this is this is potentially a good sign in that the whale populations are increasing, and that we might end up seeing this happen more often than than previously. So, uh, with this with this whale, you know, that's now washed ashore, and I know the plan is to just kind of leave it in place and let na let uh, nature take its course. I guess I understand we're not going to do the thing in the '70s where. You bring out a bunch of dynamite, but um, you know, outside of that, uh, what is the reasoning behind leaving it there on the uh, on the beach? Well, that's the easiest thing to to, to deal with it by far. Uh, just let nature take its course, it, and it depends where they come up on the beach. You know, obviously, if it's in a, a well used uh, uh, area and a lot of houses around or something, uh, they're probably going to try to drag it offshore and let it let it sink to the bottom, but. If it's uh, an empty stretch of beach, uh, just let nature take its course. And since it is over there now, you know, and, and like I mentioned, I believe the the tide took it about three miles north of where it originally was, but still there and and available for people to go and take a look at it. And, I, and that's kind of to the point of one, one thing I wanted to talk about. A lot of people are heading out there to the coast to take a look at the whale. I mean, it's an anomaly. It's something interesting to see, but I know there are concerns too that they need to watch out for when they approach it. So what are some safety tips to go view the whale? Um, it's not much of a, a, a hazard, I have to admit, a dead whale. Uh, if, if the tide is uh, sloshing it about, you wouldn't want to be uh, too close to it. Uh, they still are quite heavy. Uh, if a whale is high up on the beach and it starts to bloat, that can definitely be a problem because at some point they will explode. And uh, if you see a bloated whale on the beach, you probably want to stand uh, far clear of it. So, But for the most part, uh, this looks like a whale that you wouldn't have to be too concerned about. Well, that's good. And now when you approach it, I know some reports I was reading were talking about how they, you know, you mentioned disease earlier that the whale could have had something like that. Is that something that humans or even dogs need to be concerned with if they're going near it? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think you can get the disease from whales. And uh, I, I think by this point, it's probably getting to be a little fragrant. So people are probably not going to be getting too close anyway. But, uh, uh, you know, it's such a, a tremendous opportunity to see up close an animal that you rarely get to see and almost never that close. And uh, boy, if you get a chance to go out to the beach and see a dead whale like that, I of course, I'm a whale biologist, but I would jump on it. And yeah, that's I, and that's what I think a lot of people are doing, too, because it is yeah. so interesting to take a look at. And that's why, you know, we have some of these photos that um, in here. There was something else I was going to ask, though, going back to you mentioned the killer whales. And I, since we have a marine biologist right here, uh, taking a look at these, I was reading that these could, some of these marks could be called tooth rakes. Is uh -huh. that correct, what we're looking at? And then if so, what is a tooth rake? Tooth rake is uh, killer whales and sharks have uh, sharp teeth and um, they try to take a bite out of something like that. And uh, quite often they're not successful, but they leave these parallel rake marks from their teeth, like right there. Those are tooth rake marks. Kind of hard to say if that was a shark or uh, a killer whale, but I was looking at some photos of this whale and uh, I didn't see any obvious killer whale rake marks. They go after the fins and the flippers first uh, because that's the easiest thing for them to bite down on. Um, they also go after the jaw, which we're looking at right there, um, because they like they like to rip the tongues out of uh, large whales. That's their favorite part that they like to eat. So there are some places on a whale where you would look to see if killer whales were involved, and I, I didn't see any obvious ones on, on uh, this animal. I did see what looked like a shark bite, and when you get a, a dead or dying whale at sea, the sharks will come and take bites out of them. So this, okay, gotcha. So that could have happened after it was already uh, on its way out, I suppose. I saw this. Yeah, now that, that is a shark bite. That's a shark bite. Okay, so yeah, that's no that could happen to it. Wow. I mean, it's, it's just interesting to be able to see that and Obviously, you you know what you're looking at. Um, how common are killer whales off the Oregon coast? Um, 
it's interesting because of the the uh, legacy of whaling. We got rid of a lot of the food that killer whales preyed on, and plus we uh, uh, up until fairly recently killed a lot of seals. And so, uh, killer whales uh, this far north generally eat, tend to be either mammal eaters or fish eaters. And the mammal eaters really took a hit with, during the whaling and sealing era because we we eliminated most of their food. And now that the whales are coming back. The killer whales are starting to come back and, and refine this this prey base that that they lost for over 50 years. So um, there are more whales and there are increasingly more killer whales now of the mammal eating types. The fish eating killer whales, um, we're eating most of their fish and they're not doing so well. So it depends on what kind of killer whale you are. Gotcha. So there is the potential we could see more of the, the mammal eating killer whales off the coast there as this general whale population increases. They are definitely increasing. We got a lot more seals and sea lions now. I live in Newport and you can hear them all the time here and uh, they are prey for killer whales and killer whales are becoming increasingly common and they're gonna be attacking fin whales, mostly the younger ones, but uh, if they find a, an animal that's not doing well, like the one that washed up on the beach, they will attack those animals. How old do you think this, was this a full grown adult, this one? At 46 feet, it's a it's a a, a juvenile, I would say, a, a not even a, probably a sub adult. Wow! Uh, they get up to in the North Pacific, they get up to like 70 feet. That was actually a a fairly small fin whale there. So just for comparison. Wow! Really fascinating. Well, you know, Bob, thank you very much for for joining us too. And just is there anything else that you think people should know as they head out there to go take a look at this? What? Uh, um, Hopefully we'll see more of these on the beach and uh, it, it, it can be a bad sign, but it can also be a good sign. So uh, anyway, I, the, uh, as long as these conservation, conservation measures stay in place, uh, we can expect to see more of these on the beaches. But if you see it bloating, get away from it. Yeah, I don't, stay away from a fat whale. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, Bob, thank you very much for joining us today. Really, really appreciate it. Okay, thanks. And and for everybody watching, too, this is Fox 12 Now, so we live stream here every weekday starting at 1 p.m. and then throughout the afternoon covering a wide range of segments. Really appreciate Bob joining us uh, to talk about that and share his expertise on the whale that's out there. So if you're heading out, there's some good advice on uh, what to do, what not to do, and all of that. And I appreciate you tuning into this show. I know I say that a lot because I mean it. I also would encourage you to download the Fox 12 Oregon app. That's available on any app store that you're going to, uh, virtually any. You can find the Fox 12 Oregon app, so just type that in, and that's a good way to watch all of the segments that we cover on here. But I'm going to sign off for right now. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.